front where it says aims real big. Hi everybody, welcome to Galitzin, Pennsylvania. We're right by the famous Galitzin Tunnels. And today, we're here at the Tunnel Inn, a place I've been wanting to stay at for years. And I finally get to do that. And it's all thanks to Mary. Mary hooked me up as a belated birthday present, a surprise. And this place is amazing. I haven't even been in there yet, but I'd seen the pictures, I'd seen the YouTube video that the owner did, and just how nice and clean it is, and immaculate, and friendly, and welcoming it is. And I spoke with him, and he gave me permission to go check it out. So I want to bring you guys along and show you guys the famous Tunnel Inn, and if we're lucky, maybe we'll get a train coming out of the tunnel or two. So here in the parking lot, we got the bee friend just hanging out. We're the only guests right now, but there will be another guest here later tonight. There is the side of the building and the awesome deck up there that you can watch trains. Look at that beautiful pickup, by the way. Anyway, here we are trackside. And, uh, well, we're on the active Pittsburgh line here. It's cool to finally be able to see the bridge from this side like this. I always ever see it from up on top or one of the little lookouts there on the top. But now here we are. Well, what are we doing? We don't have any trains coming right this second, but we do have a welcoming and warm atmosphere in here. This sign here is very cool. You might not know what this is if you're not as big into rail fanning. You may not understand it, but this is for the horn pattern. It's an old horn pattern sign when you would when a train would reach a railroad crossing, two longs, one short, one long. That's the, the sequence that you hear when they hit a crossing all the time. But these are the signs that used to exist, and they still have a few out there. They're hard to find, but if you're lucky enough, you'll find one somewhere out there on the rails. But that's pretty cool to see one that close. Okay, so as soon as you walk in the door, too, you're welcome with these train magazines. They have board games. Well, they have magazines. They're little uh, postcards, but look at the group photo of all the heritage units. There's uh, more heritage units on there. There's a Nat Cole. And then they got more over here. Oop, there you go. Now you can see Savannah and Atlanta. And it's awesome. I love the dispatcher's board that they have set up. And you see that we're penciled in on there for the room that we're staying in. And, well, it's just beautiful. Look at this historic photo of the tunnels. Very cool. I love this too. Anyway, here's the kitchen area. And I was pleasantly informed by the owner that that's a drum kit because I saw his collection of guitars. And I said, I'm a drummer, or I'm a percussionist rather. And he said that there was a drum kit. So that's really cool. There's another picture of engines there. Love that. And that's what you're going to find here all over the place. I love that. 1988. I was born on Saturday, March 26th in 1988. Maybe that's what went wrong. I was born on a Saturday. I was born to be wild. <laughs> Look at all the mugs that they have up here, too. Tunnel in mugs. You can buy these ones here or even that one there. Very cool. It is a bed and breakfast inn. So they do have breakfast for us at 8 in the morning, a fridge with water and milk in there. The Horseshoe Curve virtual rail fan camera. So you can always be alerted for a westbound train because when a train goes by on there, usually in about 15 minutes or so, it'll come out here at the tunnels. The tunnel in milepost 248 Galitzin. Yep, they got board games you can play. Napkins, coffee. Fantastic. Cereal. Here is the staircase uh, where I was down in the kitchen area. Come up here and you're greeted with these displays here. I was especially fascinated with a few in this one here. The old Amtrak unit. Very cool. RJ Corman, check that one out. Very cool. 
I even got the Southern Heritage unit. Sorry for all the glare, by the way. Zoom in, there we go. Where is it? One of my favorites right there. The big boy. Isn't that cool? Very cool. Whoop. Don't wanna fall. And they have more over here too. It's kind of harder to see these ones because they're up so high and I'm short, but you see a Conrail box car in there. Very, very cool. Love the displays. And the old signs. And there's a picture of Horseshoe Curve right here. Beautiful. Here's a map with little dots on there to indicate where visitors have come from to stay here and you see them from all over New Mexico Arizona California Fort Worth Texas and that's it wonderful place okay so here we are upstairs now and this is where they have the guest rooms here we're staying in the MO tower room very nice I'll show you that in a moment there is a guest in the Juni Auto Suite so we can't show you that one but right now we have two other rooms open here and the owner, uh, the Alco suite, he gave me permission to come in here and check it out. I mean, you just see how nice this is in here. Really, really clean, really nice and comfortable. I like the desk here too. And this one doesn't have a view of the tracks or anything per se. I mean, you can kind of see the old tunnel back there that was sealed off and what the gentleman was saying was the women kind of like this room. They can read, you know, if their husbands want to go out and, you know, chase trains, they can do that. Then in here is the bathroom. Look how nice this is. Wow. Everything's supplied. Very cool. Shower. We'll pull the door shut now that we're done in the Alco suite. Okay. Oh, there we go. And then, yep, and you'll see these old calendar posters. Here, that's from 1983, Norfolk and Western Railway. There's another one down there. I'll show you that in just a moment. Here we have the Baldwin Suite, and this is the one that has two twin beds in it. You know, if you and a friend want to come out here, there's the tracks right there. That old Chevy pickup there too. Beautiful truck, by the way. Really love that truck. And I'll show you that in just a moment. But yeah, and then right across from us is the park. And I'll show you that outside too. But look at this. Isn't that awesome? And the TV should be in here as well. Yes, it is. With a little fridge. Very cool. Then in here is their bathroom. Very clean. Very nice. Love the setup. I love that. Everything you need in here, too, to make your stay as comfortable as possible. Love the giant ceiling fans. <laughs> but anyway, I know we have a train on its way, but we're going to wait to go outside to get it. Let me show you our room. Now I'm going to show you the MO Tower room. Love this one, too. Come on in. Let's check it out. It's absolutely beautiful in here. And the owner was telling us this is the only room at the hotel here that you can see the train tracks from the bed. So there's the bed there and my new Norfolk Southern hat. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> um, yeah, good old posters around Pennsylvania Railroad. Just absolutely awesome. That old calendar there from 1954. But yeah, awesome bed, and there are the tracks right there, and he wasn't joking. I could be laying in bed, looking out the window, and you'll see the train tracks back there. You see through the lines there. There they are. And now that goes west towards Pittsburgh, and anything coming from the west goes right into the tunnel. So, with that said, we'll go check that out here in just a second now. Here's where our TV is in here. Very nice. Nice little fridge. Whoop. Ow. 
And then back here is our bathroom. Very clean. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Look at that on the window. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, very clean. Nice setup. Love the little sign up there. Very, very cozy. And since this is our room, there's the shower. Very nice. Highly, highly recommend. That's the calendar right outside of our room. Love that bridge. The old, the old, uh, <laughs> they look like high noses on there. Very cool. 1984. Now that I showed you the rooms, let's go outside finally and see how it looks out here. This place is awesome out here. Very, very cool. And you just let the door shut and you have the view of the tunnels below and track side. Yeah, they even have a little fireplace here. You can gather around, they'll put a fire out. The owner even said he might do one this evening. You can sit out here and enjoy a drink, a coffee, a beer, a soda, whatever you like. And then here are the tracks right here. And there's that old Chevrolet. And then there's the good old B friend, the tracks, and then the tunnel right over there perfect place to view it. You could even go down there if you'd like to, but why do that when you can hang out here on the exclusive deck and see them trackside like this? And the greatest thing is you might see these lights here at nighttime. We can flip these lights on. It says it was on. I don't know if they really are or not, but we can watch them at night and turn the lights on. So there's the view of the tunnel from up here, and if we want to, we can go downstairs to the yard. So let's go ahead and do that. This place is so cozy, and it is priced very, very fairly. I mean, very reasonably priced, and honestly, the rooms could go for more. But there's your view from down here. You know, I don't want to get too close to the edge and fall, but... There's a view there, the tracks each direction. And I believe we have a stack train on its way. 12 seconds later. Just like that, here comes that stack train. on some of these well cars. There it is. We just got a white ninja. <laughs> we just got a white ninja. It was real low to the ground. I saw it last second.
Boy, they just clear that bridge. I know there's a couple of uh, ACUs on the rear of this train. We'll be seeing those momentarily. That bad. <laughs> Here are the empties, the ACUs are coming up any second. Might get a horn salute if we're lucky. There they are. I'm sure you're wondering what did I mean by a white ninja on there. This graffiti right here, this, I've pointed out on lots of trains already. And what it is is this caught my attention a long time ago, and Chad from Historic BF, a fellow rail fan out there that does train content, he spotted this before and brought it to my attention, and then I realized just how frequently I was seeing this on trains. So we both tried to do research on it, couldn't find anything, and then finally one day he got lucky and discovered that the artist is named Jabber. He lives out in California, and he's been doing this for well over 25 years. And, I mean, it shows we see the face, or the white ninja, on so many trains, and I was wondering when we would get one today. Not if, but when. Because in another video, you'll see I was doing uh, some train chases out there at Cassandra Overpass and at Crescent, and also got a couple at Horseshoe Curve. But how cool is it to show you guys the tunnel in and have a train come by and have a white ninja on it? That's pretty cool in my book. A few moments later. Here comes Amtrak, I believe. This, Yes, it is. Oh, wow. All right, everyone, well, it's the next day. I slept like a baby last night, even with the trains hitting the horns right before they entered the tunnel here. But the beds here are super, super comfortable. Wow, slept so well. And the only thing that did wake me up in the morning after it got daylight were a couple of trains approaching the tunnel, but that was mainly because I wanted to see what it was, if, any, if it was anything good. And just stacks. Nothing special this morning. However, last night, Bob and I were having some fun. <laughs> you might have seen the drum kit under the covers. Well, Bob uncovered it and gave me permission to play it. And actually, he plays guitar, too. And he's really darn good at it because he was playing last night. And, well... We just didn't have the time to just free jam, but he uncovered it. And he said he doesn't just uncover this drum set for anyone. If they say they're a musician or they're a percussionist, he'll, he, he literally said, no pressure, but if you want to play it, go ahead. And I did. And I figured right now there are no guests here. We like the place so much. And since it's a Saturday and they had a room available, 
we're staying another night. Now, the room we were in was taken by another guest, so we got put into the Alco room, which was the only one they had available, which is fine. That's not a big deal. But I'm excited. We get another night here, and we have the Pennsylvania Heritage Unit on its way very shortly. But since there's nobody here, and since Bob gave me permission and said it was okay, why don't we hit it up real quick?
I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. That was a lot of fun doing a tour of the place, and it's all thanks to Bob, the station master. Anyway, I had a really wonderful weekend, and I really enjoyed all the trains that we were able to catch. I, we caught lots and lots of trains, so stay tuned for the uh, videos coming up very soon, including catching the Pennsylvania Heritage Unit as well. You know, with the Tunnel Inn, there is a lot of history to the place. I could go on and tell you guys about it in this video, and it would take me another 10 to 15 minutes just to talk about it, at least. However, given the fact I plan to return to the Tunnel Inn, I'll save that for that video, as well as another thing I didn't show you in this one, the HO scale model train layout that Bob has. Now, while we were there, we just didn't have the opportunity to see that, nor did I come prepared. You know, if you ask Bob nicely, he may just let you see it and run your own locomotive on it. So that said, Bob, if you're watching that, I plan to bring my uh, Norfolk Southern 1001 uh, EMD SD70 Ace with me, uh, which, funny enough, was actually trailing the NS8102 Heritage Unit, the Pennsylvania. So that'd be pretty cool to try that out. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully we'll be able to do that in a future video. Anyway, I want to thank Bob for his hospitality and even his girlfriend that came to visit while we were there. Both were very, very nice people. Uh, I just felt so at home and so welcome there. Mary and I had a fantastic time. No complaints whatsoever other than the cold, which is nobody's fault. That's just Mother Nature. And now here we are just a few days after our trip and it's 80 degrees outside. That's spring for you. <laughs> Anyway, I look forward to returning, especially in the warmer months where we have the longer days and can all sit outside and enjoy a fire, maybe a beer or two, who knows. Anyway, if you're ever in the Allegheny Mountains and you're ever near Horseshoe Curve and you need a place to stay and they have rooms available, check out the Galitzin Tunnel in a wonderful, wonderful little getaway out of the city. 2,000 feet above sea level, right next to the historic Glitzen Tunnels, where you'll catch nonstop train activity 24-7. Sometimes there are some slow periods, and that's what happens on the railroad, but when they start coming through, sometimes you can get five of them in just a couple of hours, if, if even that long. So the best thing to do is just come on out and stay there. And even if you don't stay overnight, check out the Glitzen Railroad Park there where there's an old caboose that Bob actually has the keys to open for people. So if you ask nicely, maybe he'll do that for you. It was really cool to check that out, though, in a previous video that I did. But anyway, the tunnel in, I have zero complaints about. Uh, the TVs were fantastic at night. Uh, the, fr the refrigerators were very cold, kept our beverages very cold, like it. And, I mean, the sights and the sounds were fantastic. Other than the trains, it's a very quiet town. You have a little tavern right next door, which has really good food and drinks. And there's a Dollar General literally walking distance from the Tunnel Inn. So if you need any things like, to like a toothbrush or shampoo, whatever, they have it there. Or whatever, just some snacks. Not too far from there is the infamous Horseshoe Curve. It's only minutes away, say about 10 or 15 minutes away, six miles or so. And then you're in the town of Altoona where you have everything. So definitely worth it. I highly recommend. And if, like I said, if you ever get the chance to go out there, stay there. Tell them I sent you because Bob was so cool and nice enough to let me do this video. So once again, Bob, thank you very, very much. I cannot wait to return. And I really want to see that train layout next time. And I would love to run my uh, NS1001 on there or any of the other engines I got. I know I have a Union Pacific one as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you get the, give the video a thumbs up. I can't talk. I'm so excited <laughs> for our future trip. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber... Feel free to subscribe to the channel for more content, and stay tuned for all the trains that we were able to catch while we were there. It was phenomenal just how many we caught, and yes, I went out late at night to catch some, even in the wee morning hours, like 1, 2 a.m., because even though I would lay down and try to fall asleep, 
I left my laptop on throughout the night so I could keep it on the Horseshoe Curve virtual rail fan camera. And anytime I heard something going by, I'd take a peek at the laptop, see if it was anything good, and I'd jump out of bed and go catch it real quick and then go back. And it was just a lot of fun, no matter how cold it was. I will say this, with only four or so rooms, Bob's uh, place does fill up pretty quickly, especially during the warmer months, that's what he said. But if you go online, you can check out what's available when and just make a reservation or request a reservation and see if he has it for you. So anyway, thanks again, Bob. Really loved our stay. Left you a five-star review on Google, and uh, I, I, all I can say is I can't wait to return. So... And like I said, in the next video, I'll tell you about the history of this place as it was supplied in a binder in the bedrooms that gave you a brief history of the Tunnel Inn, the tunnels, and even the caboose across in the park there. So anyway, with that said, stay tuned for that. I can't wait to go back and do that video. Until next time, everybody, take care and stay awesome. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching again, everybody. Bye-bye. Shoestring was the only name he had When I'd skip school he'd take me fishing Sitting on the creek bank talking and wishing Things were good whenever times got bad And the people say shoestring you ain't got no money Shoestring you can't hang around here Shoestring you got your hat on backwards He knows more than most folks do he don't talk unless you ask him to When the winter comes and the wind blows me Shoestring hops that southbound train Rides it down below that Florida line well, he's laying low and picking fruit, sleeping in his worn-out shoes. But he'll always come back come summertime. And the folks say, shoestring, you ain't got no money. Shoestring, you can't hang around here. Shoestring, you got your hat on backwards. He knows more than most folks do, but he don't talk unless you ask him to. Last time I looked and found him gone, folks said he's in an old folks' home. Shoestring done retired on Uncle Sam. He's living it up in his private room, playing checkers and eating.